Well, it's hard not to look at it in it really and think probably that might be that now. I was looking forward to this game. I was really looking forward to it because I genuinely felt this was a game that we could get a result in. And we talked in other weeks about, you know, Leicester, Southampton, Ipswich, you know, whatever. They're not games that will will decide their fate this season, you know, the, the course that we're on. And games against QPR, Birmingham, Uddersfield were the games that had decide our fate and um, unfortunately unfortunately this is a massive game and it's been one of the poorest performances at season um, it's a game when we really needed to turn up um, all that said I don't think it's the 4 nil that the history books are going to suggest. When you look at the entire game over the entirety of the, the 90 minutes, but the truth is we've we've got battered. It's three points that we really needed. It was a six-pointer. QPR's got to win today as well. Um, and sort of even worse than that is, although in the long term it might not matter, but the goal difference has took a, a punishing. So, a terrible... Terrible result today. Middling goal. Back for Valentin, Bernard, Ahekwe and Pedersen making his debut for Wednesday. Midfield two of Palmer and Bannon. Attacking midfield three, Masaba, Ugbo and Gasama. And recalled Michael Smith leading the line. So a few changes there. Pedersen in for his uh, debut at left fullback. I'm quite pleased we've got a left back in because uh, Rhys James has obviously not had a, a real look in. I've not been a, a big fan of for Mayo out there. Um, and Marvin Johnson, he's done a good job out there, but I I thought the proper left back in behind him, I'm still a big fan of you know partnerships, would free him up further up the field. Um, as it is, Marv's dropped out, Pedersen's come in. A lot of rumours doing rounds that, that Marv's got lip on because we didn't let him get a whip switch. Um, I'm not sure about that. I think that's a problem with social media things, isn't it? Rumours get around. and oh, Don't get me wrong, you know, I'm sure it would have been a nice last payday. What is he, 30, 31, 32? Um, but it switches out on a limb, innit? I mean, it's a bit pain it has to get down there, Suffolk. And the, you know, there's other considerations. He's 32. He's got a family, he's got a missus in house. It, it can be a, a move can be a pain in ass as much as it can be a, a bonus thing, you know. Um, and a club have come out and said that he's got an injury, so I'm, I'm pleased about that. Maybe he'll put an end to them rumours or whatever. So Pedersen came in. The other change, obviously Smith's coming up front. No problem with that at the outset because we know what he is, target man. He plays down the middle. I was a bit surprised... In terms of the wingers we've got, these sort of outside, inside out wingers, they're not like old fashioned wingers, be the full back and put a cross in, are they? They're more. Your wide players these days are they're attacking midfielders, really, aren't they? They're not wingers. If you've got a Michael Smith down middle and you've got, you know, John Barnes on left and Pat and Evan on right or whatever, whipping 10 crosses in in each half, you know, great stuff. So I was a bit. Is this going to work? I was a bit, I was, I was a bit surprised. Um, and then when that lad's messaged me, he said, well, he's had to put Smith in because uh, the excess number of loan players. You can only have so many loan players in a squad, apparently. So that, because for all he's got like a goal scored in it, I would have thought Fletcher would have been a, a better fit for this sort of lineup. Well, there we go. First half, it's a game lacking in any quality. It's a poor, it's a poor game of football. Um, both teams look nervy, giving ball away really cheaply. Lots of my absolute worst nightmare. Under it passes. I cannot stand 
under it passes ping it ping it I'm not you know I'm not saying blast it into somebody's face from five yards away but professional footballers drill your passes into your mate they can control it they can control it and if they can't they, it's probably them that shouldn't be in the team not you don't un, don't under it your passes there's loads of that going on which is like I said I, I find that one of the most frustrating things in game under it passes um, but it, it's it's two teams struggling, you know, obviously for confidence and, and both giving ball away a lot. But in a way, that it's a poor game. But the fact that they're giving ball away a lot and the fact that it's very open in there uh, means it's a really stretched game. So to a neutral, whilst it's not beautiful on the eye, I could see it might have been quite entertaining if you weren't a, an Huddersfield fan or a Wednesday fan. Wednesday probably. Best first chance, there's um, Kasama drifting inside, it lovely little reverse pass, Ugbo is sweeping a shot to a fast stick and Lee's heads it off at bar. I mean, it's not a great chance, it's an half chance, but it, it's sort of best best opportunity for either team in opening 10 minutes. Um, neither keepers really had much to do in that opening 10, to be honest with you. Like I said, it's a sloppy game. Nobody's particularly using the ball well. Wednesday's wingers. I thought Gassama was a threat um, for parts of the game. Masaba, for me, as it has gone off boil. Um, but I think Uddersfield caught us on up a bit. Obviously, John Worthington there. Standing manager played for them. I think he played over two hundred games for them, something like that. You, you know, what twenty years ago. Um, they've gone to a back four. No, Dad and Moore obviously sacked in week three five two all the way. And I think if if Dad and Moore had still been there, you know, I'm not I'm not slagging him off at all. But I think because he were sort of embedded in that system, I think if they played three five two. That would have given us a, a better opportunity, you know, to get Masab and Gassam in game and, and get in them wide areas behind wing back and when you when you've got white when you've got three set of halves and your wide set of halves are having to sometimes shuttle out to your wingers and, and, and leave man in middle exposed on his own at times. When I'm looking at this game in week, I thought that, that we're going to be planned, and that's why I really thought we could get a result here. Obviously, Worthington's come in, gone to a back four, proper full-backs, um, and I, their full-backs have played well. I think they've kept our wingers largely quiet. All right, sometimes they've had to double up on them, but they've done a job. I think Worthington's done a job tactically. Um, And, and that change of shape, I think, was a, a big part today. Result. Whilst we're talking about changes in shape, though, I think that subtle change in Wednesday's shape over the last three or four weeks, um, I think that sort of blunted us a little bit. And I know it's only a, a subtle change. We've gone from a sort of 4 3 3 to this 4 2 3 1. And I know you can argue it's still five across the middle. Right? But just those small distances being changed, it can make up difference. And too many times today, we've looked very open in middle of the park. And it goes back to that thing that we talked about. And we've talked about it last season, even when we were in third division. You've got to have two absolute ball breakers you've got to, if you're playing two in midfield these days you've got to have two absolute beasts in there and okay Ugbo's dropping back in 12 but Palmer and Bannon in there I thought they were really exposed today I thought they were really exposed um, and like I said maybe credit to their manager for their change of shape but equally I think we've got to look at ourselves and say why did we change from that midfield sort of triumvirate that were working um, with Will Volks in there. Now, Will Volks, for me, were probably played a month going into Christmas and suddenly he's not getting a look in. And, but we've talked about it so many times. When Will Volks sits in there and you can have the two marginally in front of him, whether that be 
you know, Bannon or, or Palmer or Byers as was. It just gives you that solidity in middle of the park. It, it gives you that anchor in there to set to other two go and play. And um, I think we've missed that. I think we've missed that in the last, like I said, two or three games. And today, the biggest of all the games that we'd, we'd got on the horizon, a real six-pointer. Yeah, that's an area at pitch that I can't stop looking at and thinking. Can the manager and, and the coaches or the players or whatever, can they look into that and, and think, yeah, we can do better there. There's better... There's better options in there tactically to combat what we've come up against today. And, um, you know, I love Danny Rowe. I like the tempo and the energy that he's brought since he's been in. But that that one little shuffle in middle of the park from a sort of one sitter and two attacking to two sitting and one attacking, um, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. This 4 2 3 1 for me. It works if you've got Windass in there. If Windass isn't in there, then it's got a bit flip. It, it's it's got to be the other way around. I'm banging on about that and not talking about game. Although perhaps you don't want me to talk about game as such because it's terrible. They they got a lad Healy. Got a, he was making his debut. He was okay, but he went off injured, and I, I actually think that did Huddersfield a massive favour because they brought Ben Wiles on. Um, and I thought he was their best player. No, it was certainly best two players. Um, he he put in a fantastic ball. Cut left hand side, cut in, and whipped a fantastic ball. So the round front of our centre halves ended up behind Pedersen at left back, and uh, their lad got in. I think it was Pearson. Beadle made a smart save on on near post. But it just shows that in football, for all planning you do, for all, you know, you can set out strategies and little patterns of play that they like to talk about, and this and other, you know. A player gets in, injured, you have to send a sub on it, and suddenly I thought Huddersfield looked a better side for having to do that. 35 minutes, probably another good chance. Pedersen put in a really good cross. I mean, he had an eventful afternoon, but he put in a really good cross, and it does, I thought what it, even though it came to nothing, I think it does show the value of having a a left footer at left full back who is comfortable going forward with ball. Who weren't particularly comfortable defending today, by the way, but but a really good crossing, first time cross. Smith coming in, um, and Tom Lee is actually really brave, put him put him in there and added it away under pressure from Smithy, but. I would say in terms of chances, sort of two one Wednesday in terms of opportunities to get a shot at goal and scrappy, open. Um, neither team dominating other, uh, and Wednesday slightly carving out better opportunities at that stage. They had a chance. I thought they were going to take the lead just before half time. Um, they had a really good break on us. As I said, it was very very open in middle of the park. Um, and Liam Palmer coming in made a fantastic block. Um, they they could have cut inside. He was just about to pull trigger, and he's done really, really well to get across and cover that ground and and get a block in there. I'm sure he's probably getting pelters online tonight because he's one of them players that always takes abuse when we lose. Um, I'm glad Dawson weren't playing to that end. Um, but yeah, nil nil at break. Poor game, poor quality. That Wednesday probably edged the slightly better chances. Second half, I thought we actually started brighter. I don't know what had been said at half time, but we come out quite positive. Um, we used ball a little better. We were trying to do some one and two touch stuff, which was something that we'd not particularly done in first half. Like I said, a lot of under eight passes first half. Second half, trying, trying to get forward, trying to raise the tempo, I think. Little one and two touch stuff um, Bannon trying to probe and get us get us going forward he, he was linking down left hand side trying to get to uh, Gassam in game and Pedersen but again final ball final bit of quality just just lacking and then they score Pearson heads it back across 
my Sabre. It's weak as piss marking. Uh, it's really, it's really, it's just not strong enough. It's, it's really half assed defending. Although I'm not sure what he's doing in there. Anyway, I noticed this Coventry match. I'm sat with my mate, we're watching it. And both Wednesday and them, uh, Coventry in that game, every time they were a the corner, every man in box, every man defending, and, and we're looking at Leave a couple up, leave, you know. Something like Massar, but I don't, he's not going to win headers against a towering centre half in your 18 yard box. But give them something to think about, honestly. I, I'd be like, oh, bogus armour, Massaba, defending a corner. I'd say, just fuck off up there. Got a halfway line. Got off it. One out there, spread out. Right across the halfway line. Just, and they've got to look at the opposition and think, well, they've got to have at least two back. Maybe three. Or maybe three markers and a spare. Just, if you, you know, you've got 19, 20 players in an 18 yard box and a ball's coming in. There's only one person going to edit. Some bodies in there, they're just going to confuse matters. But uh, anyway, I'm banging on now, but really weak. Really weak. And then, so they've took lead. As I said, a shame for Wednesday because I thought it was probably our best spelling game. That which didn't say much, but it was best spelling game. They've took lead and then bloody less than two minutes later it was two nil. Roma finishes, it's a nice finish. Uh I guess a Wednesday attack, down left hand side, it's looking okay. Um Masama get Kasama gets tackled. Uh, it's not a tackle from behind, but the man comes from behind him, and I just don't think anyone's giving a shout from man on, so he's got that slightly dawdling look as he gets robbed, and it's that, I think it's that Matos that went ball off him. Good player, I liked him. Uh, dived about a lot, but if you could take that out of his game, I, I thought he was a good player, quite like the look of him. Uh, loads of energy and drive, and he, for the forward player, he, he, he put a foot in. But he, he won't ball. It's a great through ball. Wednesday absolutely split wide open. Um, and their lad runs into a really nice calm finish. But 2-0. Two, two goals in less than two minutes. And it, it it's game of a... I'm sure there'll be people saying that season over. Um, there might be some twists and turns yet. But in terms of this game, that were that, were that dead and buried. And it's... It was sort of goal, but we don't score. Do you know what I mean? Tackle, pass, goal. You know, it's it's three touches. It's ironic. I'd call that direct football. You you know, and you talk about direct football these days, and it's it's almost like a dirty word, isn't it? Oh, direct football. Look at a dinosaur. You look awful, awful. You know. It's got to be dungarees with one strap and a fucking top knot. Keep holding up ball, knock it about. Tackle, pass, goal. I'd like to see a bit more of that from us. There's Wednesday piling on. We, we make a couple of changes. Ugbo goes off for um, Kadamatri. Um I had a brought Smith off. Had a left up bow on. I pushed him further on, trying to use his his pace and his willingness to to run in there. Um, I've got no against Smith. This sounds like I'm slagging Smith off, and I'm I'm not blaming him for defeat. I'm not really blaming any individuals for defeat. Um, I've stayed off line tonight because I'm sure there's plenty of that going on. I'm sure there's plenty of player X or player Y should never play for the club again. They're a disgrace, and this. So I'm, I've stayed away from that, but. The game as a whole, I just thought everything that, that could go wrong has gone wrong today. The selection, um, I think he's not got his subs particularly right today. That midfield shape, I don't like. Um, but I'd have said that if we'd won, to be honest. Uh, it just it left us open. In 76 minutes, 
Bernard goes up in their half, trying to, trying to win an header, free kick. Um, and we're jogging back, we back to the ball. It just goes back, it's basic things that you learn when you're a kid, you know, we used to have cultures when kids. If you give away a free kick or if he goes out for a, for a corner, sprint back five yards, then turn and look, make sure you know what's happening. And then backpedal if you have to. But we're jogging off, facing away from the ball, and their lads think it's hog. Touch, bang, 30 yarder. Everybody's caught. Oh, there we go. oh shit. Their kid runs, it's a good finish actually, and at far post, because Beadle's a big lad, you know, leg, arms and legs like a spider. Um, out muscles, uh, out paces Pedersen, and. 3 0 Thomas, I think it is, who, who scored that, and it's it's dead. And then. And then Bernard, you know, he's get that free kick away, and then we're, six minutes after that, an absolutely suicidal back pass. I think he's trying to get it to a heck way. Um, I mean, heck, we'd, I feel for him, you know, because that kid's quick, very quick. He manages to get back, and it, him and him and Beadle sort of between him manage to sort of slow him down, but it's it's a goal as soon as that back pass is made, to be honest with you. It's, I mean, if you do that at the other end, it's a, it's a brilliant through ball, isn't it? You know, it, it was sort of through ball that... You know, people spaff the pants about when De Bruyne does it going other way, but you know, when it's your centre, they have to win it back into your own eighteen towards your own eighteen yard box. It's a, it's a stuff of nightmares, isn't it? And um, four nil, and it is a nightmare scenario for Wednesday. I did the only time I went online tonight because, like I said, I didn't want to. I didn't want to depress myself because I know what what a meltdown it will have been. Um, and, and I'm as pissed off as anybody else is, but I, I, I'm not in for name calling and all that. But um, the only the only thing I did see online tonight, I saw Radio Sheffield. I saw that interview with um, Danny Roll, um, and you could see how much he would hurt him. And he said he's going to take responsibility for it, and you know. It is painful when you're a manager and you're picking a team and it's your tactics and then all gusty shit like that. Uh, but I, I do think he has to look at himself a little bit. I mean, at 2-0, I know we're desperate for points. But we weren't going to score today. We weren't going to score today. You could tell that after 45 minutes. You could tell that after 50 minutes. And, and as soon as we the two goals in quick succession, it was clearly game over, isn't it? I talked about this in a, in a game of the week. I think there's a there's always a, a part of a game or a, a time in a game when you have to look at it and say, do you know what, let's just not make this a showing up, you know. Um, and again, like I said, I, I might be banging on. The, all this talk has sneaked in this last few weeks as, oh, we're playing with two number sixes. I mean, getting away from the hipsterisation of the numbering system and everybody wanting to be exotic and European. You know, five and six were centred halves when I were young. You know, and our friends Beckenbauer, six and all. Your deep line midfield player would have four when I were a kid, you know, but now, and all this. Quarterback, fuck off, get him bin. I've got no time for that talk. It really, really annoys me. I'm, I'm nearly as wound up about all that sort of chat as I am result, to be honest, but I can't stand it. But anyway, two number sixes or double pivot or whatever nonsense language we want to call it. I don't like it. I don't think we've got players to do it that way. Like I said, unless Windass is playing at number 10, don't do it. 
just rather somebody set one or win tackles and keep it moving simply. Somebody like Will Volks in a number four position. And then, you know, you can play an eight and a ten in front of them or whatever you want to call it. You know, Bannon. That manager's referred to it himself this week, hasn't he? Bayers has gone to Blackpool on loan. His contract's up in summer, so you know he'll not be coming back. Um, and George Bayers hasn't been at his best this season by any joke. I think that was like, two or three long spells he had out injured last season. Um, so he's, he's not hit ground running. Then he had the nonsense of Cisco. Rather, you know, who'd rather play Lee Gregory in that role? A fucking lunatic. Um, but even managers referred to, we've got several players who can play that six role, you know, that sort of deep. I would have never considered George Byers one of them anyway, and he, he has played that role this season, and I, I genuinely think that's one of the reasons he hasn't looked as good, because for me, George Byers was a forward-thinking midfield player. He, better 10 yards up pitch than playing in one of those two set-off. You know, you look at his best games last season, uh, Volks, Byers in front, Bannon in front. Um, so I don't think we've particularly used him well this season. Um, good luck to him at Blackpool and, and whatever. You. Will he be a success there? I know some people, are, oh no, I think he's past it. I'm not sure about that. I don't know if he'll fit in there. From what I gather, they play 4 4 2. And like I said, I think he's just better that five yards further forward, nicking goals and. Does five yards make a difference? You know, does it make a difference if you you want it two set in front of back four or you you're slightly ahead of that? Well, yeah, of course it does. Of course it does. Well, look at Gerard and Lampard playing for England. You've got Lampard playing for Chelsea. He's got you know even McAleary behind him or whatever. And it, he's playing ahead in one in that two position, two ahead position. Playing for England in their flat. You've got Jed Hardy's playing off the front man as number 10 for Liverpool. Off Torres. No, getting there in a the flat too. No, you know, and they're top level players. Top level players. So playing five, ten yards higher or lower up pitch camp can make all the difference because you've got to play players in positions that utilise the abilities and, and the qualities that they bring to the team. And the George Bears for me was a goal scoring midfield player. And, and the configuration of that three in the middle, yeah, I don't think it makes all the difference. Mind you, I did in Carlos's first season because I still, I'm telling you now, if we'd not done that shoe on four four two to try and cram everybody in, and we just said, right, Hutchinson sat deep at base and midfield in a number four position. We. Kieran Lee and Bannon slightly ahead of him I still think we win that game against Hull I've got lip on about everything now haven't I? not that it matters anyway because we've got fucking squad numbers now aren't we someone else we adopted absolute bollocks I can't blame Clive Tildesley for it at all, but it's first one I can remember with. And Beckham in this quarterback position, get him bin, just get him bin. It's like a pontification at game, isn't it? You know, because game's still very right simple. Still very right simple. You know, we can talk about analysis and data and XG and this and that and other and psychologists and getting into players' brains and phases of play and patterns of play and low blocks of defending deep. You know, this is an easy way to say it. And we can talk about all these things, but it, when it boils down to it, it's still very simple, isn't it? 
Play players in positions that get the best out of them. Pick systems that get the best out of the group. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. The other stuff, yeah, use it as a tool, as an aid. But the basic thing always remains the same. Get players in positions and areas where they can do well as an individual and as a unit. It's that simple. And and, and too many times, you know... I mean, you play a target man, but you play outside wingers and you don't put crosses in. You say you've got too many midfielders and then you play a right back in the middle of the park... I'm just, yeah, I'm frustrated. Frustrated. I still say it weren't a 4 0 performance of it all. I mean, it's, it's been a piss poor game. Um, but they weren't much better than us. Let's not, you know. They'll be delighted with a 4 0, and I'd be delighted with a 4 0. But, you know, I don't think any of their players are going to be going home tonight going, fucking hell, I've played right well here. But the caretaker managers come in, galvanised them, change of shape, flat back four, largely nullified our wingers. Uh, and they've took the chances. They've took the chances. I mean, it's still not impossible, but it's looking harder and harder. The transfer window. God, well, I should probably do a different video on that alone. But we've got what we've got in terms of squad. Can we eke points out? Probably. They've, they've all got to be wins, really, now, aren't they? Third division. Do you start planning for third division? Well, if you do start planning for third division, it's got to, it's got to involve a front three of... Kadamatri, Gassam, and Masaba. And say, so, right, they're playing... That, that's the front three. So it's got to be three behind them and then but four behind that and, and sort it like that. Let's not funny about it. I've got more wound up, more of more, more I've talked about it. I'm quite calm when I sat down and press record, but... This were... This were a big game and I really, really thought we could get a result today. I've been right looking forward to it. And um, really bad. Individual moments. Individual moments have killed us, haven't they? But to be honest, when we look at back at this season, that's that's been the story of every time we've not won a game, really. Little individual moments, because folks falling asleep, taking eye off ball, watching man instead of ball. If you break down all goals we've conceded of a season, there's always that pattern. It's it's always somebody switching off or somebody dawdling or... And like I said, the irony is, I sat down for the second half with a cup of tea and I thought, oh, we're starting to look brighter team here. And then... Yeah. Ah, oh, God. Bernard gives that foul away, strums off, shocking back pass, and yet, you know, he's probably been picket signings for the largest part of the season. But he's only on a one year deal. Is he going to stay for the third division? So much. I know it's only one game, but already, from that one defeat today, it makes every it puts a different complexion on everything, and you're starting to look and think, yeah, we have got a plan for next year. We have got a plan for possibility. We're not going to be up here. I know there's still points on board, and we've got to scrap and fight for every point that's available. And if we can take it to a wire, brilliant. Let's take it to a wire. But we've got to have one eye on, on what's around the corner. Um, and unfortunately. It looks like third division's round corner. 